how to respond um, using news letters, e email newsletter things, uh, but more with more immediacy and more interconnectivity. So it wasn't mm. a one way, you know, a, a, just a sort of a top down thing. And Gary was going to look into it, but I, he may well have been too busy to do anything this week. Uh, yeah. Well, that, that's uh, an excellent question. Um, <laughs> it's, been, it's been a strange week. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, I can say I, I was busy. Mm -hmm. I, and I, and I, I've just got so, so many things that I'm not doing. Right. Um, and that's just one uh, of them. And, and I sort of reached this. Well, well, that's, you know, it's, it's not just that, I, I guess, when you get so many things, which is so important, you sort of reach this point of paralysis, and you don't do any of them. Does anybody else do that? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I really, yeah. really know that one. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, in summary, Alfie, as I say, what we would, we would, did you see the um, email newsletter from Creative Dharma? Um, from Ramsey. No, I'm in the same state as Gary. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm just oh. lining up all the things I haven't done. <laughs> <laughs> well, he um, he launched his his thing, his uh, and he, I asked him how he got on, and he said it was it was very well received. Uh, it had. It's got something like 170 people uh, who received it and over 60% opened it, which apparently is unbelievable. He says normally if you get 50%, that's remarkable. And there were 600 odd viewings. I didn't quite work out how you get 600 viewings from 170 people. And then there's a percentage of the things that were clicked on. So my link was clicked on or visited 40 by 4% of the people, something like that, mm -hmm. which was about seven, I think, seven people by the time you've sort of done the maths. And he's, but beyond that, beyond the sort of success of um, it working, um, I don't think there was really much else at this stage he could, he could say. Uh, but we, as I say, we were talking last week, Carrie and I, um, about whether there was a possibility of producing something which was different from that in that it wasn't a, um, a sort of a, a managed, well, I suppose it still has to be managed, but uh, not a, a sort of dictatorial, uh, that sounds a bit over the top, but you know what I mean, the sort of, um, I am presenting, yeah, I'm, I'm presenting you with, with things here, but more of a conversation. And how do you have a conversation, more of an open conversation on something uh, like that? The other thing we talked about was, I, I think we both felt that it was um, more quite uh, very wordy. It's very long, uh, which he says is, um, was a deliberate thing. But I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have read it unless I happened to have something from me in it. Um, uh, so it, 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 it did, I'm not sure um how how it's going to go how, but he's out uh, he's very pleased he, he gives it hoping for a 250 subscribers in a year and he's well, he's almost there after one month so um it it sounds like it could be something that spreads the word to a wider audience at least and he sort of said and he also said is there anything that we would like to put in it for um, future months which is something we talked about before we had said we would try and um, produce something, hmm. but. Um, I, I think I'm coming to the, um, to, to the, I don't know. I feel like now I need, I need a break. So as kind of, it starts to, um, 
unlock and and uh, get back into into the normal thing again i'm coming to the end of my resources which is quite a funny going against the um going against the stream thing <laughs> so i understand it's it's all the i think a lot of people who have been working throughout and holding their shit together in a way are coming to the end of their capacity now and it might have it's not something that suddenly it gets too much but it is really linked again to that unlocking so as the world comes back onto line i think it's getting apparent that how much was dangling on 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 this so i think gary is in in that same position um interesting isn't it I, i'm just interested and um to to see how neurons work and how our how our reason works in the way of when we have too much to do we, we get paralyzed we can't do anything and and interesting also how to, how we incline to call that depression then as such a psychological slant on everything when actually i think it just needs to be seen as a cognitive neuroscientific given you know how how can our brains um, deal with that complexity and they can't latch on to anything anymore in the normal dopamine serotonin uh, um, cycle and then it just unravels if you can't concentrate on anything anymore we can't get into that tick off mode anymore and that might well get our mood down because the serotonin is is dwindling but it's not a psychological thing it is a neurological thing i anyway how are you <laughs> i'm i'm fine um because i don't have the pressures that um other people have within this but it I, I can see the parallel um, which always used to happen uh, with Lynn and teachers generally um, in that you survive through the term time and then you get ill immediately the holiday start mm. because you're you've been you don't realize okay. how many how much um, of your resources are going into the, the daily life of keeping everything in order mm. and keeping on top of everything and uh, physically it it's also you seem to be able to stave off all of the potential illnesses that you could get whilst you're in in a classroom full of um of of humans with lots of other you know diseases but as soon as you <laughs> as soon as it ends everybody gets ill and it's a sort of it's, it's sort of remarkable when everybody goes downhill afterwards for, mm. for a, a couple of weeks and then they sort of then they start to recover but it was it's, it's sort of incredibly predictable um uh i see it because i you know friends who were in the in they were teachers and the mo the ones who were the most committed are the ones who felt it the most who found it the most difficult so you can see how that's a sort of parallel of what uh what's happening with people who are who've been so in, intensely involved in uh, uh, looking after other people during COVID. Mm -hmm. Even though it's been a virtual thing, it's not, you know, it's, it's still the same um, what's happening intellectually. I think the other thing that was interesting from what you were saying was about the, it, it's levels of control because we want to control and we like to have a sense that we're in control. And when that becomes overwhelming, that's like when you can't be in control anymore. And that's when you go, oh, this isn't, this isn't working and I can't do anything. Ah, interesting, yeah. And I just wondered whether we actually, you know, whether we think we're, we think we're in control. I mean, at all of anything. <laughs> I mean, is that, is that really a sensible way of being? You know, that we actually think that, that we're, we're actually controlling things. I mean, it's a, it's odd, isn't it? That we think we're controlling things that are beyond outside of our head. And, uh, we have sort of pretty limited control over, over anything. 
if it's uh, something that I've learned in, in business is that, well, well certainly it will, management, I should say, um, is that, you know, management is, is an illusion, you know. Uh, my particular job is to give the illusion that I know everything and that I'm in control, whereas in fact, I really don't know anything and I'm totally not in control. But as long as that illusion stays up, it's okay. Once the illusion cracks, then I've got problems. So it's all illusory management. So. <laughs> well, uh, it's absolutely true. It's when you get promoted. Well, I remember when we were in the university, I mean, there were people in positions of power and who had absolutely no idea what they were doing. And, but you, you know, still went on, you know, students still came in and <laughs> Still Just collected don't tell it. Anybody. Yeah. Well, it's a sort of yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, but the idea of having control over things. I mean, yeah, it wasn't. It's a bit like having trying to have control over COVID. I mean, the, what a, what a bizarre idea that is that we've trying to control. This, 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 uh, uh, this virus, uh, and we don't even you know we have to know nothing about it and what's going to happen but uh, everybody likes to I mean the government likes to present pretend that we're well this is the interesting thing it's, it's uh, I, and and it's the cracks are showing because whole nation states are now not believing the illusion anymore of mm -hmm. the state being in control isn't it and so all sorts of aggrie grievances bubble up yeah. And people are demanding change because clearly no one's in charge here and yeah. uh, they need to do better. Yeah. So revolution is brewing. Let's hope. Let's hope. Are you old anarchist? <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure it's a revolution. Oh. I, I, I think I'm it's, just a... <laughs> it's not it's not revolution. It's been going on a long time. I think the, the shift from uh, the power resting with a few people to resting with more people has been happening since power stopped resting with um, ultimate rulers of, of god kings in ancient Egypt. You know, you've got one person, he's the king, and he's also god. So everything, every all power rests in one individual, and we've we're now and after democracy, we've got power sort of being spread around a little bit, and I I, I think it's really just an extension of that is that, that we will get less and less power resting in a few individuals, which is a good thing. So I'm not sure it's revolutionary. That's a Okay. Yeah, but, but if, you, if you look at, at um, you know, certainly that, that could well be happening, but um, there's, there's a, another perspective on this, and that is that there's a huge power shift going on uh, from nation states to, well, basically Silicon Valley. Uh, you know, that, that, that's what I see happening, but m maybe that's sort of a, a cynical view of the world but um i mean you know for all the noise that's happening on social media and and uh, other places i mean the people who are who are profiting from the situation are, are, are basically all silicon valley based um I mean, I mean show me one silicon valley company that has not benefited from the situation, you know, they're, they're, they're making a killing. I mean, they were basically pretty much in control before, and now we're just seeing, you know, a, a further transfer of, of you know, effective power and control over people's hearts and minds. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Through, like, yeah. Well, I think certainly wealth. Absolutely. He says on Zoom. <laughs> Yeah, well, in terms of wealth, I've, there's no doubt that these people are, um, but there were a lot of rich people in the past, and there are rich people now. They work in different industries. 
Um, I, but I'm not sure that they control power and I'm not sure they control hearts and minds. The, the, they would have to become the influencers. And, and I, well, I was on a, another Zoom with my family, my, um, uh, and uh, it's quite interesting, my nephew, who's 50 odd, um, was thinking it would be quite nice for the family to have a political discussion, which was very odd, because he said he was fed up with Zooms that, where everybody's just sort of being, saying how they're getting on and how they're coping with COVID and isolation. So we, we now have a sort of every couple of weeks, a chat about um, how we think about politics. And we're quite, <laughs> quite a political <laughs> bunch. So it, it's, it's interesting. Anyway, they, one of them, um, another nephew, works uh, very closely with uh, the uh, social media uh, people in Google. And he was saying that, in fact, they, there isn't, they're not a political platform. They're not, because I was saying, oh, they should be taxed like journalists, like, um, like journals. And he would say, well, they aren't because they, they don't have anything to say. They're not editorial based. It's people who present information on there. Um, and so they're, they're neutral from a, from a journalistic perspective. And so I thought about it, I think, yeah, well, he, he's probably right. They're not like a newspaper. They're not like the Guardian or the Times or something where you have a, an editorial perspective. And if you don't have that, then how are you influencing um, politically uh, people's ideas, people's hearts and minds, if you like? So I'm, I, that's why I thought maybe I'm not absolutely true that they have wealth and potential power, but in order to have power, you have to have ideology. You have to believe in something. You have to think this is the way I want people to be. I want people to work this way. I want them to act in this, this fashion. And if you don't, other than I want them to buy my product and use my product and, and be, um, be accessible to the advertising that's on the product, then I, that's a, it's slightly different from a political perspective. Anyway, maybe. What if I argued well, that I that is, are... yeah, that, um, uh, that, that is, uh, old hat to influence people because if you are a big tech firm in Silicon Valley you could say that's a debating club I'm not interested who is convincing who and who fails to they just debate till the cows come home but I'm the platform and I stay and so I'm in I'm the only thing that matters is not influencing opinions but influencing behavior and there we have all conformed now. We are all Zooming. We are all, uh, you know, Twittering and da da da. And, and so we are behaving, sharing our opinions. The content of our opinion used to matter in the way of parties and all that kind of thing. Maybe it doesn't matter anymore. Maybe just the sharing itself, the, the, the behavior that is where the power of these firms lies and the content it's it's nothing to them for their, and and maybe so the the power is in enabling the behavior i don't know i'm just throwing that in oh but i think the uh, i mean the fact that they they can i mean, I mean basically in most cases they want clicks and so the more, uh, the more people interact with their platform, uh, it, not just in terms of, uh, you know, talking to other people, but engaging with advertisers. I mean, that is their objective, ultimately. It's getting clicks, getting people to click on. Things. Yeah, I, I have no doubt. And I think you're both right. It's, it, is about, it is about having people use their platforms no doubt and it and that's a way of making money but what i'm saying is i'm not sure that's the same yeah, as I having political about, influence it's um 
Well, it's it's political. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, now I, I spend about uh, I don't know four or five thousand dollars every single month, which I give to Google, and I've been doing that since 2005. Now they are just a, a massively influential company. You know that their resources are, are just you know, mind-boggling. Um, they don't really need to do a lot because they've already got what they want. Um, I think you'll see them start to act when when their when their uh, uh, when their ability to actually extract that wealth from people is is uh, in some way interfered with. Um, I mean, and they thrive on conflict. Uh, I mean. I mean, you can't get people engaged unless there's something to engage with or something to get emotional about or something to be interested in. And, and so the, the, the whole, the, the platforms actually encourage conflict and, 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 uh, and reactivity uh, because that's the way they get engagement and with engagement comes, uh, you know, the off chance it might click somebody's advertisement. And, uh, and, and, and therefore cost me money. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's the whole game. And, 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 to, and to say they don't have an ideology, I think I, I, they, they may not have an ideology in the conventional sense, but they certainly do, do have, uh, that there is a, a very, very strong, um, um, what, what is it, undercurrent of, hmm. of certain Things which people in Silicon Valley and, and the, the, the broader sort of um, you know uh, IT industry um, have, have you ever, uh, ever heard of Ray Kurzweil? Nope. I have heard of him, but I don't know Not what many people it was outside. about. Yeah, Ray Kurzweil. Yeah. Yeah, he he, he wrote a book. In, in 2004 called The Singularity is Near. Um, it's, a, it's basically about exponential technology, digital technology, and the way that it, that, that, that it, uh, that it, that it grows exponentially. Um, you know, like, like in Moore's Law, for example, you know, since 1965, yeah. you know, computing power has doubled every two years, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, we started out in, I don't know, 1964 with, I don't know what it was, some, some ridiculous amount of transistors on a chip of eight or something. You know, now we're up to, you know, billions of uh, transistors on a chip. Uh, and that, that's exponential growth. Now, of course, people will always say, oh, well, Moore's Law is going to die. You know, it's, it's already over for, for Moore's Law. And, and certainly for Moore's Law in terms of silicon chips is probably over. But in terms of computational power, you know that there are other technologies, and that and that that, that Moore's law is continuing. Mm. We are continuing to see, you know, you know, doubling of of uh, you know of, um, of computing power every every year or so, uh, just by the use not just of you know a, a CPU, but but uh, a CPU in conjunction with other other supporting technologies. And of course, now we're moving into the age of quantum computing. And now once that is figured out, which could probably be another, you know, four or five years or something like that, from what I've heard, um, you know, it's going to get very, very interesting. Uh, because what quantum computing means is effectively that uh, all previous encryption you know, we've been using up until now to sort of, you know, prevent people from eavesdropping on, on, on internet traffic, that encryption will be broken. It will no longer be possible to, to encrypt um, uh, internet traffic. Uh, and so, you know, the first person out or the first company out with, with uh, um, a usable quantum computer, well, you know, it's if I was them, I wouldn't be telling anybody. 
Yeah, I, look, I, I, uh, I, anyway, I have no I doubt about the, the, the technology. The, the, the point I'm trying to make is that yeah, I'm not convinced that they want, their aim is political power. I think that the aim is probably making money. Um, but I hope, I don't know. I mean, there doesn't seem to be much evidence of, um, look, if, for instance, do you used to, or you, if you were in England and you were a business, you would have previously put your money for advertising with newspapers, let's say, well, the Daily Mail. And the Daily Mail, so you would have been paying the Daily Mail. And the Daily Mail has a, um, ed an editorial perspective. It has a political perspective, which is beyond its nature as a, I suspect, beyond its nature as a, um, a, just as a business, just about making money. Yes, it makes money because it, it's sensational and it encourages conflict in its, uh, in its presentation of the news. But in addition to that, the owners of the Daily Mail have a political standpoint. They, they want us to be in a particular way. You know, they, they would support things like Brexit, for instance. And they, they did. So there you've got a parallel institution, um, which is not a platform for the news, but has an editorial perspective and has a political perspective and is also um, taking in advertising, works through advertising. It, it makes its money through businesses advertising on its platforms. Now that's been subsumed to a great extent by, as you say, by Silicon Valley and by Facebook and Google and the like. But unless they also have a political perspective behind them, their interest is not the same as that of the Daily Mail, for just, just as a as a for instance because they are not particularly it seems to me anyway they don't seem to be putting a particular political uh, perspective that they want us all to adhere to other than well, as, it's, as, it's... As, as as like like elfie says yes behavior they want us to act in this way because that keeps making them money Yeah, it's exactly. like any platform. It's on a I mean, meta level. Is politics. Yeah. Sorry. But the, but they have control. So so to what extent is control politics? I mean, you know, I, I think, and I think probably getting back to Ray Kurzweil, um, you know, it's a bit hard to explain. But but uh, I mean, his ideology, if you want, or his view of the world, permeates. Uh, the entire Silicon Valley, you know, even unconsciously, pe people absorb this sort of uh, uh, exponential mindset uh, and uh, and this mindset and, and this sort of you know mindset that you know if, it, if it's not worth a billion dollars, it's not worth nothing, and and this and, and it, it really is about control by uh, an oligarchy, an oligarchy of of uh, of people, you know, centered around digital communications technology, which effectively does control a lot of our behavior. And so to the extent that it controls our behavior, it, it can be called political. It may not be ideological. It, it's, I mean, it, it may, I mean, you know, were, were kings and queens ideological? Well, oh yeah, absolutely. Works, yeah, but they certainly had control. Well, no, they were. They were pretty. They were very, control. very ideologically. Yes, yes, that was that was a that was the premise that they were. I mean, the point was they were appointed by God. I mean, you know, not even appointed. They were God. I mean, they were the queen. Even our queen can find her yeah. descendants directly to to God, but but. For instance, yeah, I think I, I can see what you're saying. But for instance, in the in America and well, throughout the world at the moment, uh, we had there is a this, uh, this civil rights movement. Let's call it, although Black Lives Matter, but if it's really an extension of civil rights, uh, which has been going on for a, a long time and is now bubbled up. But mm -hmm. Americans from the South 
in the past opposed civil, the civil rights movement uh, for political reasons, because they felt ideologically that black people were inferior to white people. It was just, this is the way things are. So it is therefore unreasonable that they should have the same rights as white people. And that, that's a political ideology. That's, that's a sort of a standpoint that, and I'm, I, what I'm trying to think is I can't quite see it's the, the same thing as that that's, that's happening in, within Silicon Valley. Yes, I can see that there's power. Yes, I can see, well, power, there's control of our behaviors um to, yeah there is sort of to an extent but it's not it's not hearts and minds i don't think it's not trying to get us to believe the things that they believe i don't i can't quite see it in the same way but well, well, hearts and minds God, in, in, uh, huh? yeah yeah go on Oh, sorry. You mentioned God. I mean, Ray Kurzweil and and the, the sort of thinking that goes that sort of goes around that that concept of uh, uh, the, the technological singularity and and uh, uh, exponential technologies. That that really is the the religion of Silicon Valley. Uh, I mean, I mean, it may not look like God, but it it really is the guiding, you know, unconsciously or not. Uh, uh, you know, you know, that that thinking permeates um, everything that that, uh, that that Silicon Valley and and uh, you know digital technologies and what have you the whole sort of caboodle uh, it influences everything that, that they do and and to the extent I mean, I mean that they, they don't sort of use that as a justification for for exercising control it's just something they they believe that you know, uh, you know technology is exponential, and we've got to get on this train, and and that you know the sky's the limit. Or, or, in, or in the case of Elon Musk, Mars. So, so it's a you know, I think it's um, yeah, it it could be equated to an ideology, but uh, but it's only really benefiting uh, you know an oligarchy. Uh, um, and not just people who are in physical Silicon Valley. I'm talking about Silicon Valley in, much, you know, in a much broader sense. Uh, but interestingly, just, just uh, as an aside, my, my first visit to, and only visit to, to the US was to, to San Francisco, Silicon Valley in 2015. Uh, and uh, I hadn't even got off the plane I was, you know, just getting onto onto the, what, just stepping off the, the, the plane onto the, to the, uh, what what is it the, the aero what whatever they call them aero bridge. And and these two policemen were standing at the other end, screaming at us. To move, 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 and I was sort of, what the hell are they doing? It was just bizarre that 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 that, that they had the, you know, it was just bizarre and, and and you know having got through there and getting to immigration and and sort of being given the third degree because of my indonesian passport and you know trying to sort of say you know what the hell are you doing here you know, you know I've, I've already got a visa what the hell are you asking me all this for i've already been through all your hoops but no they wanted to do it themselves and they wanted to sort of you know impose their own sort of personal sort of i don't know what it was maybe they like, Maybe they get their rocks off by, by you know, shouting. I don't know what it is, uh, but you know, it, it was it's a it's a damn police state, you know. And, and Americans just can't see it. They can't see it. I, I guess it's you know like boiling the frog. The frog. They've been immersed in that environment for so long. Little by little, they just haven't realised they've created a police state because that really is what it is. And and it's just a my experience there was just, I mean, my, my, my experience in Silicon Valley was great. That was you know, fantastic. But in San Francisco, it, it's a, the poverty uh, and the violence. You know, just in my hotel, you could hear gunshots just from down, going off down the road, a, a place called Tenderloin. 
uh, I don't know why they call it Tenderloin, but it's called Tenderloin, uh, the, a, a district that's a, full of junkies. And no, I had a wander through there. I shouldn't have walked. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, and that's where the gunshots were coming from. And some non-stop sirens, um, uh, always having, you know. You want to come and live in Acne, in, mate. You <laughs> you <laughs> 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 Gunshots. And we uh, I mean, sirens going all the time. We get gunshots, we get murders. Flipping heck. <laughs> he lives in a cloud of ganja. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I, I know I yeah. went I've only been to America <laughs> once and I went to New York and it was just the same. I mean I just couldn't believe how unpleasant and how uninviting and how difficult it was to get into the bloody country mm. and I won't go back again. But that's not the that's not Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. That's that is not. No. That's not. The, in fact, they would try and do the opposite. Yeah, okay. no, they would try true. and make it very inviting. That's a political. That's my. Mm -hmm. I think that's my entire point. That that's a political um, perspective. And now, well, if you can, okay, let's make that so. Okay, we we do the whole tech stuff uh, like a religion, right? So uh, your God is. Uh, digital, um, um, what what would it be? Is is the digital world? That's your god, and then we got the high priests uh, swarming about in Silicon Valley. They adore it, like like uh, Gary just said. You know, they believe in it. That is the only god they have, and then, they do. like in any uh, religion. Uh, like the Catholic Church, you could be a socialist, you could be a conservative, you could be, uh, you know, it didn't matter. Everyone was welcome in your church and your political yep. outlook or so the church did not mm -hmm. care about. That you could have opinions till the cows came home as long as you would do the 10 thingies, you know, the 10, what is it, rules, laws. And, commandments. and the commandments, that's the one. And, and it's like, um, so uh, in, like in the digital church, you have to say uh, no control over the digitalness. Um, you have to, uh, you know, they get very titchy if someone wants to control them or tax them or anything. That's another commandment. You shall not tax us. Um, yeah. <laughs> You know, so there's a few commandments that are absolutely required and you've got, you have, there's no, no messing. They are taking on the President of the United States though. You know, it's quite interesting. They're having a little, a little test what that yeah. would be like. And, yeah. yeah, wouldn't it? And he backs off. He fucking backs off. You know. Okay, sorry for my language. <laughs> <laughs> but it is really just a little sign who is in command here. Huh? Yeah. So I I could easily yeah, make indeed, that indeed. that comparison. Yeah. Go on, Mary. The, 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 pers the person that I was the, 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 I went to the, uh, to America to go to this conference. It's two weeks. Uh, it was actually the in the um, uh, oh, what's that called? God, my memory's going. Um, it's in, in a, a research center. Of, oh, you've probably heard of it. I forget. Anyway, we we're sort of billeted in this in this uh, ex-military compound uh, in Silicon Valley, uh, and and uh, the, the the person running the course was Ray Kurzweil. Uh, so I've actually met the guy and uh, I've met other people, you know, um, it's, you know, the high priests, you could say, of, of Silicon Valley, and and you know, the, and and the, per, and the and the people sponsoring this particular conference that I was going to were all, absolutely all of the of the companies, the the big uh, uh, Silicon Valley companies, Google, uh, even Google and Microsoft. I mean, they they rarely got together in, in you know to do anything but but the, they they both were sponsoring it you know apple uh not facebook uh but, but basically they were promoting this particular perspective uh of uh, of 
of, of, of exponential technology and, and, and the whole Silicon Valley deal. Uh, so, I mean, I find it, I mean, I think that could be described as ideological in as much as they want to, you know, promulgate this particular view of the world uh, in order to, to be able to sort of, um, you know, have, I guess, uh, you know, some sort of support or, 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 or basically dialogue with people who sort of, you know, agree with that particular view of the world. But, but it's, you know, yeah. But you know these people really are considered like the the prophets of of, of, of the digital, digital age, and and, uh, and 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 Ray Kurzweil actually work now works for Google uh, as as it's, as its chief technology engineer, uh, oh, no chief of uh, engineering at Google. Um, but you know all these things are really really closely interconnected. Um, and and, I, and I, I think you you probably could describe it in, in ideological terms. Well, okay. How come then you've got just what's happened last week with Facebook that um, the owner of Facebook has he he's, he decides the rules of Facebook and he decides that it's okay for. Um, the president to um, post messages which incite violence because he said that's free speech and then there's people who work for Facebook so I would have said that was a non ideological perspective or the perspective of uh, this is just a platform people can do what they like on the platform but within that within his organization he has people who disagree and say this you're you shouldn't do this you you, sh you shouldn't spread um you shouldn't allow the spread of this you should have rules effectively um like twitter has decided it will impose its rules which has had for a long time and they said i'm not going to impose them on the president but now they've said that they will Finally. yeah so but so and and facebook have done it so now the owner of Facebook is, is sort of going away. And he's having to think about this because he's thinking about, okay, I've got, I've got a slight problem because if my workforce, the people who, who I work for do have an ideology, a political perspective, maybe I should listen to them. Maybe I do have to accept that. Now that's a political perspective, which doesn't come from the owners. It comes from the, from the workforce, the people who he needs to continue the existence of the platform and there is a difference between that as a that's a political perspective so what twitter did was was to say we have some rules and we're actually going to use them and we hadn't used them before and zuckerberg saying well i haven't got rules but maybe i did ought to have rules because this is it you know i have to consider this so that's not the same as a religion it's not the same as and the, the reason that also it's not the same as a religion is because it's not belief um if you believe you have faith in god there is no mm -hmm. evidence you require no evidence whatsoever that god exists it's a it's faith-based this isn't faith faith-based there's a plenty of evidence that this works and there's plenty of evidence that um the 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 technology exists and that the science exists and you could you know, the, the, so it's i don't think it is analogous to a religion um just using words to I say they're prophets so I, it's not the same <laughs> a prophet is somebody who says I think something without any evidence for it that's not the same as somebody who has got evidence to say hmm, i think this is gonna happen because there's a lot of evidence that says okay. it will the, the prophet Ray, Ray Kurzweil has um, <laughs> prophesied that in, in the year 2045, 2045, he puts a, a specific year on it, the technological singularity will happen, which will basically mean, uh, you know, humans will basically merge with machines and we won't be able to differentiate. That, that's the basic thing. Um, it's, probably, it's really worth it reading his yeah, book, uh, the, 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 um, the singularity is near 
it's a, it's a really thick book, lots and lots of numbers in it, really, really, very big numbers. Uh, uh, but it's extremely informative. It can give you a really, a, a, gives you a, a foundation of how people in Silicon Valley think and you know, and and what and how he prophesies. He, he really does, in fact, prophesy. And and the problem is that he's been right too many times. So maybe in that case, it's not, not a you know, prophecy, a is it? It's not a prophecy. Wrong. It's a prediction. <laughs> he's not prophesying. He's, he's making predictions based <laughs> yeah. on evidence, that, which is not a prophecy. Well, uh, I d I disagree, yeah. Rupert. Mm -hmm. Just like in no. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, re when religion is at its uh, high point, it is evident, you know, just like we now find problems with Christianity, but in medieval times, you wouldn't have, it would have been evident for you everywhere. You didn't know there were no deniers in that way. They would have said the same. They would have said, this isn't religion, this is just reality. I think, when it gets, you know, it's like fish in water. We don't see it as a belief anymore. But look at how it has invaded everything. You know, like we even, we believed that we need to be communicating around the globe, you know. I need to talk with Gary today. I just totally believe that, you know. And it can only be done digitally, so that's the way. And that's the only way that you can be a meaningful human being at the moment. But that is a belief. It's not evident. We just subscribe to it, you know. So I would be much the lesser for not communicating with Gary around the globe. But never, oh, mind. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> never mind, you know, that is the, the, that life has to be lived digitally or it's meaningless. That is a belief. It's no mm -hmm. less um, uh, uh, it's a it's a religion, absolutely, and it's as you know that it it has a total parallel for me to Christianity or whatever religion that we believe we can't possibly be. So the moment it is this, you know, like you were a, a created being, and that was totally uh, evident, and 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 evolution, you know, wasn't there and and needed to be really eked out a lot but now you have to it, it it now we are digital kind of uh related beings and we believe that with with vigor and nothing else is possible and how could i not live without that in we, we, we look in disbelief at someone who is not connected and they are weird you know and just like we we look at other people or a christian would have looked at a, at an African person dancing around, oh, I don't know what, uh, you know, they, they, we would have just said, well, they are weird, obviously, you know, we are Christians and those poor people just don't, don't know how to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I, in, so it has all the parallels for me, that it is not more evident and not more scientific or whatever you want to call that, that is not religion. I think we have completely signed up to the belief of of digital uh, interaction. It's not a belief. I'm sorry. <laughs> digital interaction is not a belief. You don't believe it. You accept it, um, and you can have certainty that it works. But it's not a belief. It's it's not. I I do not believe. You know. It's that I believe in God. And and the point is the reason it's different is because why don't most of us now believe in God? We don't believe in God because we can find there is no evidence for this. So we're presented and the, because we've been able to rationalize it and all the evidence points against it. The evidence that we do find points against it. And there are the different processes going on. It's this, the fact that we're online today is not because I have a belief it's because it works. I don't, I don't think I, I will, I have a belief that the computer will allow me to talk to Elfie and Gary. It's not a belief, it's evidence. It, it's look, here it is, it's working. If it didn't work, so I can't, it's, I don't believe in it. I have 
I, I, it, it, there it is. I can see it's working. It's evidence based. And, and I, so I, I, I don't see it as a, an analogous to a religion. And it, yes, it's very um, persuasive. And yes, we, uh, we could become, I suppose, we could become um, oblivious to its, uh, its potential as something which is damaging. But I, it would be quite difficult, I think, for us all to to think, oh, this isn't this isn't damaging. This isn't important. I think we all probably think it's. You know, if we think about it, we think, yeah, we we're, we need to be aware of the dangers of um, somebody who is, you know, do, does does have potentially this level of power. And I think politi politicians are aware of it. I mean, the point is, can we do anything about it? I, that's, you know, and if it got in the control of somebody, if Trump was in control of Google and Facebook, I think we'd, there'd be some serious problems. Um, but at the moment, that's not the case. So I think it's it's more about, you know, is is that a possibility? Is it possible that there could become people who, with ideology, ideologically based um, beliefs that ran Silicon Valley. But at the moment, it doesn't seem to be that way. It's a bit like the industrialists. It's a bit like, say, um, uh, you could take in a, in, from the Industrial Revolution, you could take Bunuel, Brunel, not Bunuel, it's a, it's a <laughs> filmmaker, <laughs> Br Brunel. <laughs> Here's a barking to Brunel, who is a man I really dislike. Um, but a great, uh, well, great. He was a big industrialist, and he he made lots of money, and became famous, and was a self publicist, a, a populist. Uh, but he was not particularly interested in in politics. He was interested in making lots of money, and and if if it damaged people and killed lots of people on the way, which it did, he didn't really care. But he was about making money. And to me, that's a sort of analogous to the Egon Musk of today and the Zuckerbergs. They're about making money for themselves and promoting, maybe promoting themselves. But really, it's about, yes, I'm famous and I am wealthy, but I'm not interested in the political power and ideology. Anyway, it's good. It's good that we don't all agree. Otherwise, we'd never be able to we'd never get anywhere. <laughs> Before, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but I think, you know, I think this it could be probably better described as a, as a religion for the elite. You know, it's ah. a bit like Judaism, you know, that you have to be a chosen one. So it's not an ideology which is, you know, democratic and anybody can join and, you know, you know nothing. Ah, not now like that's it. interesting, yeah. It's the select. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, so, and, and it's, it's Maybe it's not an ideology, but it's a very, very broad understanding. Uh, probably not, and, and they probably couldn't even express it themselves, but they've sort of been brought up in, you know, in an environment where that sort of thinking is just, just completely permeates um, you know, the environment. And so that, you know, it's just not questioned. Uh, and, and to the point that, you know, you know, you know, why do they amass such massive wealth? Well, you know, Money is power. Money buys power. Money controls people. Um, so you know, I think you know to, to sort of separate economic power from political power is is is, is not not correct. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe it's, that's the shift. Is that it's a shift from political ideologies, from sort of right left thinking to to just wealth, but. Uh, People have been very rich in the past. It's ol oligarchic. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean. Uh, not this rich. <laughs> oh, yes, they have. Yeah, Darius owns. And they're going to get a lot richer. Well. They're going to get a lot richer. I'm not sure. How do you, Darius owned half the wealth mm -hmm. of the earth. One person, one man, half the wealth of the earth. Darius, mm -hmm. Darius, Darius the first, Persian king. And in fact, there was a, he was descended from somebody who owned pretty much about three quarters of the wealth of the earth. I can't remember his name. But 
and so at one time you've got people owning as because they were rulers because they were kings and because they were you know appointed by their own by their own gods whatever that they that they owned everything and and they owned all of the people so it's not just owning wealth and owning people so it's it, so i'm not sure that zuckerberg owns me or owns even though i did post on facebook this week <laughs> years and years of nothing <laughs> he's on to you He's on yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. I've, I've signed up now. Uh, I've become a disciple. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you've become a disciple. <laughs> yeah, I, so I don't know. I, I, you know, if you historically, people have owned a lot more. I, it, I would be impressed if anybody owns half the wealth of the earth and half the people on earth over their devotion to one person. I doubt that's going to happen again. Well, you know, there's aspiration. But the earth in those days was a lot smaller. No, it's a as we're talking in percentages of the population. Yeah, there were, you know, yes, there are more people now. The world is the same size. Yeah. They and the resources of the it. world are the same. If you combine digital and pharmaceutical, you can have a good go at it. I think that's it now the next step. Look at what Bill Gates gets into. You know, he wants that next vaccine. And then, uh, and then it, it will be a good move towards that actually, because that's what it will all be about. You, know, the, you, you have how to communicate. Uh, so having all that uh, sorted and uh, how to not die. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so I think, um, well, that's another very interesting thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is not dying is is really very very central to, to Silicon Valley thinking. Um, yeah, I don't know how much you know about this, but it's actually a very very strong element. Um, uh, this whole long longevity, you know, immortality ideology. People like Peter Thiel. Peter Thiel was a partner of Elon Musk in pa PayPal, and. Uh, He's actually a, um, yeah, and after he sort of went from PayPal, he went into Facebook, and basically he's got, you know, he, he's he's one of the one of the high priests of Silicon Valley, and he's right into um, uh, life extension technologies. Uh, well, Google itself, Calico, uh, is is a company set up to to, to, to produce uh, uh, life extension technologies. They're right into it, you know. This is they are talking about immortality. So let's, you know. Are we still talking about religion here? We're getting pretty damn close. We're getting pretty damn close. I need your help, Gary, though. What is the God? Because I haven't got the right yeah. word for it. The digital what? What is that word that would be the deity? So we got the high priest. Yeah. I didn't know, but, but what, is, what is that? You know, that the digital, the digital? What is it? Digital, techno digital technology, the, the technology. Digital technology or, it is really yeah. the, the, the God. It is it. The technology is the God. I, th I think that would be correct. Yeah. Heidegger knew that. He was, <laughs> he was, he was very sad. This, yeah. uh, well, technology, he said, it is changing the way that we are thinking without us noticing. It does that same religious move, you know, that we just suddenly, mm -hmm. that it does that mm -hmm. same thing. And it is really not about being a Christian or a Muslim, you know, it is on that meta level of being, there is a God and I'm, it's cre uh, his creation. That level of religion, that, that which is an ideology, yeah. which yeah. then forms all your understanding and and on that level i feel that it is an absolute parallel of what we're going through with digital technology it it forms our understanding of who we are and what it is to be a human being and and then we get then we we follow our different religions underneath that and then we have, and, and we have our high priests, and then we have, you know, uh, movements within it, like the Jesuits, and they do um, 
uh, they burn people and uh, you know so so then that's the level of these ideologies where they get more visible as political ide or ideologies but it, that's all on the next rung down and to the real high priest thing that it is it matters not in the in the way that you say they actually quite like the dialogue it keeps the whole thing going and it is opium for the masses like you know if they if they discuss and, and are at each other's throats about that stuff they won't even see how we live up here you know and then we live forever yes yeah yeah yes It's like when you said, you know, we press the, what did you say? We press the lever. I really had this thing of, you know, like we are like rats, you know, we are getting trained to press the lever for yes. a morsel of food. Yes. And we do that, you know, we're very well yeah. trained every day. We come and press the lever again many times. And mm -hmm. uh, does the experimenter yeah. really um, have any interest in how the rats talk amongst themselves when they kind of have a little rest in a corner, you know, it's nothing to them as long mm -hmm. as they come and we press the lever. You know. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It, it's, it, and in that way, we, we do it. I, I feel that we do believe now because we could just step out mm -hmm. and perceive ourselves differently, not as, as humans that need digital technology, but just as someone, I don't know, who has chickens and grows, grows courgettes, I don't know. Um, <laughs> makes <Awesome>. potions. <laughs> Yes, oh. indeed. I do that too. <laughs> do you? I didn't have you down well, as, how, as, when, as when a small well, holder. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you have chickens. Well, no, I, I, I've got a, a little. Um, I, I used to. I used to have chickens. Yeah, I used to breed them. Uh, mm -hmm. New Hampshire's. Uh, uh, but, but apart from that, and goats, of course. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, in, in terms of you know stepping outside the technology, I'm just wondering whether anybody is really capable of doing that. Maybe not. Could Maybe you not anymore. Yourself saying, okay, enough of it. Enough of this technology. Enough's enough. I'm just going to not do it anymore. I'm not going to have a, a, a phone. I'm not I'm not going to have a computer. I'm not going to touch any technology at all. That's that. So it's really going to be difficult. I wouldn't even know where to get the chickens from, you know. It's like <laughs> you, did. you couldn't you couldn't do a web search, could you? No. You'd have to start asking people and, and, asking and they people, wouldn't know either. Before you sort of found someone. Yes. Yeah, they would no, they'd Google. <laughs> they'd <not find> <laughs> Well, that would be cheating. <laughs> you ask a friend. <laughs> oh. I hear you, Rupert. Hold on to your opinion. It's not a religion, so that because um, we we need to uh, keep um, wrestling with that. <laughs> I think there's a there's a few things. Is one is that. You should go and live in Italy if you think that people re require digital technology in order to find things out, because they don't. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a, it's, but it, it might, probably will change. But at the moment, you know, it, that's in Central Europe, and they are, they people don't use um, Google very much, and they Does don't. Does Gates use it. know about that? And what's well, his no, initiative? <laughs> it, probably, I say, it will change. It's just that the, the nature of the people. <laughs> They're incredibly conservative, and they, if they want to find out where the chickens are, they go and ask somebody. You, because nobody has, very few businesses have a mm -hmm. digital presence. But yes, it will, it will change with, I guess, over time. But it certainly hasn't happened at the moment. And there's a difference between, I think maybe there's a difference between technology and digital technology. Because the, the idea of stepping outside of technology is sort of a Luddite approach, um, or not even a Luddite, more of a, a shaker approach to say, well, 
we don't need uh, the technology we can live outside of that but that that's absurd because it all technology it means that you can't have wheels a, a wheel and axle or you can't have fire it's all technology technology is is not something that is separate from from the way we are it, it's a it's part of what we are and so what the premise is i think from what you're saying is that digital technology is different from technology and that's the bit i find hard to accept it's because you're it isn't <laughs> because it's technology and it is part of what makes us so yes we it might be that um we are it's this idea that there is something separate from us and it isn't it's part of what we are because we so because that's what technology is and the idea and that's what's wrong with heidegger i think when he talks about technology and because he's assuming technology is something separate from what humans are it's a bit like clothing it's a bit like to say that clothing is separate from what humans are and humans wear clothing we don't decide to wear clothing we just wear clothing that's part of what we are it's part of being human and technology is part of being human that's it's it's what that means so whether digital technology is separate from that i don't know i but I, I just don't know maybe it is but i can't see it i think digital technology is, is famous technology can... The, 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 the difference between digital technology and, and other technology is the, the, is the its ability to be exponential. Like we've never seen exponential technology ever. Uh, so, so I think you, know, you might be able to make a differentiation between you know, uh, normal technology and exponential technology. Yeah. Digital technology is, is exponential. So to that extent, I think you could make a difference, but 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 essentially they're all human creations. But uh, uh, for how long? Uh, you know, if if you keep on you know exponentiating sort of the technology to the extent that we're not needed anymore, um, you know, at what point does the technology say, well, you know, why are you hu humans here? Or, or, you know, well, it, but then so why um, indeed and the point about need i mean who who says anybody needs humans other than other humans nobody says there is no sense of need it's a word that only us could say only humans could say so if there's something else yeah. that is that exists that is not human and they just they think they could think that that's fine why wouldn't they but nobody at the moment there isn't anybody else but that, yeah it, that's sort it's sort of like The sense is that well everything should stay as it is now well it's never as done before why why would it um things change my only thought, real thoughts about it is if there is a a sense of going backwards in terms of let's um, sort of a term like freedom slavery that's good <laughs> slavery is a good one because if you own somebody else they're no they're not free and you can decide um what they do because you own them so that would be a backward step now there isn't at the moment anybody there's no um country in on earth as i know that is suggesting a return to slavery to uh, ownership of other people under law um that would be an ideology which would be i think most of us would consider detrimental so just as putting it as an extreme point of view the fact that there is uh, growth in digital te technology does that mean that it is, it is potential that we could we could regress in those sorts of terms not to that extent but but in in that way i suppose that's that's my real question is You know, regression has to decide in that. technology has happened to human communities. No, no, not regression in, in technology. No. Regression in 
in ideology. You have to go back to Confederate States in America, let's say, it's only got a couple hundred years ago, um, that there, that was a belief mm -hmm. and it was enshrined in law and then it was taken out of law and enshrined in the Constitution that you couldn't own somebody else. So it would be a retrograde step, an ideological retrograde step. So just take that in broad terms. You could, so you can apply that to lots of things. If that, if exponential growth in digital technology allows that to happen or promotes that in some way, and I can't see why it would, what the benefit of that would be or how it could happen. But if it did, then that, yes, I would think that's a real problem. I think by the time we knew it was a problem, it would be all over. <laughs> but in that case, it doesn't matter, does it? 2045. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to yeah, no, yeah. just, Let's just all give up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to leave. I've got to get back to the office. And do more things that, or Absolutely. avoid more, more, more do, doing things. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Okay, well, hopefully, have a more relaxing week this week, okay. um, and both of you. Uh, and, uh, you. Oh, I hope and, so. And, mm. okay. and have a slow recovery, or fast recovery, or whatever, fast recovery. but recover. You too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, have a good week. That was fun. Oh, I okay. enjoyed that. Okay. Hey. See you bye bye. Bye bye.